Good evening, everybody. My name is Joe Pine, and this program is presented to you in living, blushing color. This way you can more readily identify the blood. The action starts right here in just a moment. demonstration I ever heard. <laughs> here we are once again, and this is where our dock becomes a beef box. And there's a man here with magazines, and he doesn't look like a, a magazine salesman. I can only assume that it has something to do with his gripe. Would you state your name, sir? Stop rubbing your hands and go into your topic or your gripe. My name is George Fords. Since very little that is openly antagonistic reaches the public in regards to the homosexual and the homosexuality, parents are unaware that their children are the intent of an insidious attack. The issue that I have here contains a detailed description in an article called Beginner's Guide to Cruising. A Beginner's Guide to Cruising? To Cruising. Is that a naval article? It is a detailed instruction in perversion, how to pervert any You mean male. how to take a normal person and convert him into a homosexual? Definitely. That's a handbook for that, you say? Definitely. Mm -hmm. These magazines were purchased in my own community, in local stores, within easy reach of children. These weren't under the counter. These are not from a other side of the track sort of store. Actually, the homosexual movement, or the homophile movement, to which they refer to it, the only way that they can perpetuate their philosophy is by, one, including into their numbers um, more homosexuals, and to do anything significant in regards to making them acceptable, they must have a large enough force. So the only grounds left open to them is are recruitment. the... recruitment. Yes, definitely. Well, I don't the, think we've ever heard so much about it until the past few years. I think it was a shock to me to learn, for example, that some time ago they had a thing called the Mattachine Society, which actually had a lobbyist with an airplane who flew from state legislature to state legislature attempting to influence legislators to vote in favor of the state recognition, if you will. Tell me what your recommendations are. Make people aware that what these people are actually advocating by asking for equality, by asking that their rights be uh, adhered to, these people, under the guise of so-called civil rights, I think if I understand you, you're saying that we don't take them seriously enough as some kind of a threat. Is that it? Definitely, it is a threat. It's a threat to pervert the, uh, uh, an entire Do you think generation. a well-brought-up uh, son of yours or of a man down the street, do you think that he could be uh, converted in spite of his good upbringing? Psychiatrists say that people, that if they are exposed to this type of material over a long period of time, that it can incite them or erotically arouse them to which they have no legitimate outlet. Well, it seems to be true in prisons, but there there's no alternative uh, for some of these individuals who apparently are oversexed or frustrated or something, but uh, I find it hard to believe that uh, a child with a proper upbringing with good standards and a good uh, father image and a good mother image would... Uh-oh, uh what's that? Can I show you an inducement into homosexuality? Yeah. A gay coloring book complete with crayons. Can we, sh can we show a picture of that? It's a what? It's called a gay, the vernacular for homosexual, coloring book that comes complete with crayons. To whom What's he saying? Cover me, co color me lavender or something? To whom would this be the recipient? To whom would this be given to? Obviously, a youngster as an inducement. I and also That's supposed have to be an inducement for tiny tots? For the coloring set? The finger painting group? They wouldn't even understand how to read that. It's not... It's not anything in print. It's Are just you sure pictures. it's not a put-on? Are you sure it's not no, a gag? No. 
Yeah. It's not. Now, what age group are they appealing to there? Obviously, the preschool, school age children, kindergarten. I also have, as another inducement, an application for employment from a modeling agency, and it is asking for teenagers who want to pose in the nude. This application was taken by a local law enforcement agency from a man who was soliciting. And he asked in here directly for teenage models wanting to pose in the nude. Mm -hmm. Under the guise of making a lot of money, they're introduced into acts and introduced into, uh, obviously, homosexual Well, how about activity. you? Because of this fight you seem to be leading, have they threatened you with anything like beating you on the head with wet Kleenex or uh, <laughs> getting tough with you in any way? I have had a switch on my telephone uh, so that when I go to bed at night, I can turn off the phone. Uh, otherwise, the phone rings consistently about every 15, 20 minutes. All right. Well, we thank you for coming and telling us what you've learned, and we'll let the audience decide what they can do about it. Thank you very much. Are we ready for our first guest? Good. All right. The cameras will switch over now. I will tell you that our guest is Mr. Harry Pollard, the executive director of a major Henry George school on the West Coast. Mr. Pollard is an Englishman, former Canadian director of the School of Economic Science, and the author of many articles on politics and economics. Mr. Pollard feels our position alongside Great Britain with respect to Rhodesia. Uh, apparently, he thinks it's proper. But he adds also that he thinks the British are right in their trade with North Vietnam and with Cuba. So it sounds as if you're speaking, sir, out of both sides of your mouth. Only out of one side of my mouth. You're probably listening with both ears. Well, that's so you can get the information back with both heads. <laughs> if, we're, if we're going to talk like that, we'll never get to the point, will we? No, so let's stop talking like that. So we've already... I find it easy. All right, let's, let's begin. Now, what's your premise? Um, first, uh, I do not agree with uh, what the British are doing in Rhodesia, but it amuses me that, in effect, the United Nations and the United States have been suckered into helping them. So uh, I, I think what the British are doing in Rhodesia is absolutely silly. Uh, with regard to North Vietnam, as we jump across the world, uh, the actual British trade with North Vietnam is relatively small, about £190,000 worth, t counting in and out. Could be uh, very meaningful if they happen to be machine guns. Yeah, oh, it could be very meaningful if we get a lot of CIA agents in on the boats to get into North Vietnam to find out what we're doing, because we obviously Does the don't CIA know what we're doing in South Vietnam. Does the CIA worry you, sir? It doesn't worry me at all. You talked about what we're doing with them, but you're one of those. You're an Englishman. I'm an Englishman, yes. All right. Oh, you mean you want to put us into a little sort of packet? No, we're all, all the same, we you're all think speaking, the same. You're now defending your country while sitting in mine. I'm not defending my country. I'm defending a principle, which is a principle of trade. And anybody in the world should be allowed to trade with anybody else in the world. This is a matter of first principles. So well, why should we change principles for any reason at all? Let me ask you a question. If a man is going to kill you and I sell him a gun with full knowledge that he intends to kill you, don't you see anything immoral in that? I think I should kill you, too. If you get the opportunity, but if I'm asking... The opportunity, don't don't yeah. switch over, and I'm asking about the moral oh, you, you, aspect you, you mean, of it. You mean, uh, if I know this man is going to take this gun and turn it around and use it against you, wouldn't I be rather immoral to sell him that gun? Yeah, I think the U.S. was very immoral to sell weapons to Indonesia when the British had 50,000 troops in, Indo uh, in Malaya uh, operating against the Indonesian... Uh, paratroops that were dropping. And incidentally, they were dropping from planes which were American and planes which were provided with parts from the U.S. If you consider the U.S. was immoral in doing that, yes, I, I do. agree with you. I do. In right. other words, I won't sit here and be a phony about mistakes we've made, but you're quite willing to be a phony about uh, <laughs> uh, the, the royal British government and its activities. No, no, I'm not being phony at all. Uh, if the U.S. does not want trade with North Vietnam, it's very easy to do something. And something to do is to carry out a Pacific blockade, which has precedent in the world, and a Pacific blockade is simply mining the harbour at Haiphong. All right, let's now, you examine you don't sink that. any ships. All you do is put mines into the harbour. And they sink the ships, right? If, they, if the ships are silly enough to run into mines, right. then that's up to them. So you're, but saying, what happens you're saying that our great and good friend... Uh, let, let me just finish this point. All right, go what, what happens is that the ships do not go into a mined harbour. And it's as simple as that. Why make a big deal out of the thing? All right, you're saying that... You don't mind me telling you how to prosecute your war, well, do let, you? Well, let me answer you now, if I can. You said I was interrupting you before. You're saying that our good friend and ally, presumably Great Britain, is unwilling to do the decent thing, since you say it's an 
uh, a small amount of trade. Surely they shouldn't miss it, should they? It's mostly ballast going in and ballast and going and in, odd stuff uh -huh. coming out. And sort of well, uh, whatever is going in there is well, whatever is going in there. The obviously the communists desperately need, and they're delighted to get it. Now, one would think that Great Britain would remember back to World War II mm -hmm. and about the help we gave. We weren't too immoral then, were we? Well, well, well one minute now. Uh, re remember, we were both fighting a shooting war at the same time. No, not right? necessarily. No, we were long before we were doing any shooting. We were supplying Great Britain with everything we could. Are we you had... sorry you did that? No, I'm not sorry we did it, but where is the memory of you people? Why can't you remember that we are no, no. supposed to be your traditional friends? And, and we even jump, our president did anyway, I'm sorry about that, and, and you call us suckers for doing it, when mm -hmm. they say, cooperate with us on the Rhodesian blockade. We run, we can't, we can't get over there fast enough, we can't send enough uh, letters of, of, of absolute uh, sanction against uh, uh, the Ian Smith government. We do everything we can. Uh, uh, in other words, you're dissatisfied with American policy, as indeed I am. Oh, I agree. I'm embarrassed that you can sit here as a guest in this country and call us suckers for helping your country, mm -hmm. but you're right. We were suckers in Rhodesia, but you're immoral in North Vietnam. You're also I'm not scoundrels. immoral anywhere. I've never been to North Vietnam. I'm speaking to you. You're an Englishman, and you're defending this. You're also immoral when you went into Cuba with buses and trucks and helped Castro. Pacific blockade, if you really want this to stop, l l let, me, let me tell you the whole problem. Why should uh, we be forced policy? in the expense of blockading anything? Why can't you remember who you are and who we are and don't put us to that expense it, it, and the possibility of maybe destroying if one of you Great don't, ships? If you don't use some method of force, uh, either, as I call it, and I haven't really called it, this is the name for it, a Pacific blockade, or actually shooting, actually boarding ships, actually blockading. If you don't do this, then you cannot stop goods going into Cuba or anywhere else by asking Britain not to send them because they find their way there in any event through perhaps half a dozen different countries. This is the way it's done. I don't think the British are that unthorough. You know yourself it's uh, uh, practically impossible to get a certain sum of money out beyond the agreed upon amount. Isn't that true? Uh, once again, I'm entirely against uh, the British policy in that respect too. See, no, but I, they I, enforce that the and they can enforce these ships. <clears throat> No, they, uh, uh, p perhaps so. Uh, perhaps they could stop the ships. Perhaps they could do all kinds of things, but they've decided not to. And I'm in favour of this. Obviously. I'm in favour not only of the British leaving their trade alone. After all, it's because of the British restrictions on their own trade that Britain has become uh, a second-class nation. You apparently not because justify of wars, doing everything not because for a wars. buck or anything for a buck, huh? No, please. You know, I you believe look in like free enterprise. Type. I believe in free enterprise. Now, you may not. Even if it means helping you your friends' enemies, enemies huh? Do you believe in free enterprise? I'll show you how much I believe in it. Here's a commercial from well the sponsor. Done. We'll be right back. You've got something to say pro or con mm -hmm. on this discussion? Uh, I have something to say uh, contrary to this because... Uh, uh, I do not believe that the uh, English as a country should uh, help uh, these other countries that uh, we are fighting. As uh, you said, Joe, we uh, well, have... Well, what uh, countries are we fighting? Is there a declared war or something? Wait a minute, you better not it say we. You're not fighting anybody. I, I'm an American resident and I have a son who will be drafted this year. And well, that's only because, you, in another that's because you choose to live here. Of course I but choose you, to live but here. But you, I as an Englishman, criticize. you, wait a minute, is you as an Englishman aren't audience, at war with anybody. Is there anybody in this audience who lives here who dares not criticize? What sort of country have I come Nobody to? Nobody says you don't have the right to free speech, well, but you just, said, you just said, what war are we in? Or we are in you it. You use the word we. Surely. You're not an American. I am an American resident. So what? And if I were the right age, I would be in the army. If I lived in Is England, true? would I have the right to sit in the House of Commons? Of course ahead, you sir. would, and many Americans have done so. Go ahead, sir. Except well, there would be a five-year uh, waiting period if you went to England. It's, uh, it's the situation is this, that uh, if you remember, uh, Joe Pine, uh, when we loaned all that stuff to uh, Russia, lend lease program, which they still owe us millions and millions. They well, also owe us, as a prisoner of war. Sir, they, they well, owe us. What's the matter? You're afraid of what this man might say? 20 million lives. Is it 20 million lives? Do you remember what Churchill said with regard to Russia? That he would ally himself with Satan if it was against the Nazis. Isn't that true? Yes, but uh, that is the question Better here. to send lend lease than send American here. kids. The question Don't you want to hear this man speak at all? Of course the I do. The question is that England is helping our enemy. That is the question. Same as Russia. Who is our enemy? 
The same it, ones that you're helping? He's using the word oh, our again, or we, see? Who is our enemy? Well, if... if we don't know who your enemy is. Well, one minute, if you're going to... Because you'll do business with anybody. If you're, if you're but he knows who his me. enemy is, and yeah, I know who please. my enemy is. You're saying that these people are not my enemies. So why do you want me to stop trading with them? Because... Uh, because it, we're supposed to be your friends. We're supposed Can't you to get be that through your friends, your in, head? In, in order to be friendly with you, we've got to stop trading. Absolutely. Absolutely. To save lives. The same way you asked us to handle you the know, Rhodesian situation. I didn't ask you to handle the Your country Rhodesian. did, your government did. Are you disloyal to your uh, government? You know, you know, if my son were in England, he wouldn't be drafted. It's here he will be drafted, uh, or my sons will be drafted. And, and if the war gets as serious as it well might get serious, then both of us may well be drafted again. And if you tell me when I'm in my well, uniform, I don't think be all desperate over again, to draft it isn't my war, in America. Then, in the American well, I'll tell you, my son forces. isn't getting, uh, uh, getting or Incidentally, waiting to be drafted. Let me just answer that. He joined the army today, uh, like his daddy, as a paratrooper. How'd you like that? He wasn't waiting to be drafted. Yeah, and, I that's know, what that, and he feels the same way as I do. He feels the same way as I do. There are a lot of things going on in this many world. Many people, you many guys young boys, all these trucks to now kill, enlist to kill us. All these in order to avoid to we take them away, take many parts young men and you guys now enlist them up there. in we order to over avoid to being you. dropped. It goes to there and comes over there to Cuba. What are you trying to drown the man up for? I'm not trying to drown <clears> him. Well, out. he was trying to make a point and you drowned did, him did out. Did you hear what I said? No, I didn't. Not pretty. He was speaking. Would you please stop drowning me out? Well, uh, I fought for the, uh, free speech and uh, Good. everything free, so go ahead. Talk. Okay. Now, just, just let's settle your problem. I have no problem, thank You've God. You've got the problem. You've, got you, the you, problem you've had buddy. the problem ever since you came to that dock. Are we at war with anybody? Why don't you ask him, are Americans at war? Because Which I'm you're not. involved in this war. By Who being sent in America? for you? Who sent for you? <clears throat> are you a citizen? Not yet. All right, you're not involved. You're but still a British I, subject, and minute, they're not involved because they're peddling goods if, if, to the enemy. If, if, if any uh, resident refuses to be drafted, then he Who's loses the right. Who's going to draft you? For Please. what? The Canine Corps? Come no, on. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can't be drafted. The, the trouble is, when they took out his tonsils, they threw the wrong piece away. Yeah. Beautiful. There's a lot of things that... Uh, I have great respect for Joe Pine. I like it, to have him slap me because you, that's... That's what we fought for, freedom of speech. And right. I like now, to have him slam me as point. much as he can. The trouble with America... But I'm slamming England for doing all this stuff. They're doing everything against us. We sent... No. Let me show you something. We sent not, some trucks. Not, not, we not sent a lot all. of trucks and parts to not England. Not at all. Do you know that that, sh not that ship did all. not get to England? You it know, got to the docks and it was sent to Cuba? Strategic material is going to North Vietnam. Who? Do you know how much strategic material is do going you? from England? To yeah, nothing. From England. Do you know that? Nothing. How do you know? Have you been on the but, ships? But, Have you inspected the ships? But, no, no. Then no, how no, do you no, know? What's your source of information? Now you want to board British ships, ships and inspect them? You're making a specific statement that you know, you know that no strategic goods are going in. You know, this fella wants to make war in. on England more ferociously than the Americans are making war on, uh, on North Vietnam. You and the rest of your people ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Yeah, this is the whole point. This is the whole point. America is involved in a war. Oh, and you finally admit if that. we do decide, no, the, the, the president won't admit it. We're, this we is a police it. incident. It, 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 it's some, some kind of altercation that's going on in Vietnam. Don't pick this is it. a war. But we, uh, A, we don't know how to win it, and B, we're not trying. Isn't this true? Yes, but we Now, do, help do you agree worse. that we should fight the war as it should be fought, not the way we're doing it now? Well, if you quit sending stuff to our oh, enemy don't uh, and send it nonsense. to Vietnam, yeah. I think we'd be better off. Oh, really? That. You know, uh, uh, less than half a million dollars worth of coconuts or something are going into North Vietnam, along as I say, I hope with a lot of CIA Coconuts, huh? Just coconuts. Yeah, you know, probably, probably there's nothing like an intelligent in man, and he's nothing like an intelligent man. <laughs> <coughs> now the funny's over. We're, we're just sending, we're just sending coconuts you know, you know, into Haiphong Harbor. The funny's from there, you know, the common sense comes from here. Coconuts and little toys and, and, uh, and uh, airplanes made of bandages and things. You know, that's all we're doing. He Nothing. makes his up as he goes along, you know. He's terrific. I want to know where you, you get know, your information none that none of these ships is carrying contraband. Tell no, me no, how you get... These, these ships, according to the British, according. according to the British, and of course he has inside information, but according to the British, I only know no, ships are going in there. no strategic material goes into North Vietnam. And as they Just have to have it, export huh? licenses, then presumably the British know what is going into North Vietnam Just from Britain. Big family-sized cans of papaya juice and things like that going in there, right? The that communists would be a are so grateful to get that. Because you see, 
Food is not a strategic material, is it? Of course it is. Everything is actually strategic Of course it is a strategic, is a strategic material. material. Okay. You feed troops, they let, keep let, marching, let's, they let's keep fighting. The, let's deal with the problem. Uh, uh, not All right, let's have another man uh, standing behind you now come up Thank here. Thank you, Joe. Yes, sir. Would you state your name, please? Chris Parent. Mr. Pollard? Mm -hmm. Yes. Last name? You made several, shall we say, I won't call them insidious. I don't know what else you could call them, though. Points concerning the blockade of Haiphong Harbor. Are you familiar with Haiphong? No. It is the only strategic port that North Vietnam has. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Number one, if we blockade this port, what does it entail? It entails bringing American ships, American lives, and American casualties all the way into North Vietnam, which we haven't done physically yet. With planes, yes. To blockade that harbor, you'll have to blockade it against Denmark, Sweden, all our allies. Now, well, now let, let me say something. Let me say something. Why not let the right. man make Why? Point? Why should we blockade? A blockade or uh, a hostile blockade with right. boarding ships and so on? Are you referring to mining the harbor? What use? Are you referring to right. this? What use would a Pacific Are you blockade? Are referring to this? I am referring to a total blockade. If you fill the harbor blockade. up with mines, then ships don't sail into it. If that is the problem, then let's do it. All right. What do you do with a mine? You put it in the water, right? This is good for one thing: a good metal ship a magnetic mine, which is the only dependable mine you can use to mine a harbor with. Do you mean to say we, we can't mine it against junks or anything? How close can you put a mine together? A mine has a drift, a mine has a drift of 37 so feet. That it can't sink a few junks. All right, fine. You can sink a junk if you have a gun to sink it with. A mine no, drifts. You, you use a mine with a little you know how far, on it, you know? you know how far a mine drifts? 37 feet from point of impact. Wait a minute, right, wait a minute. You're, you're talking with a man who obviously knows what he's You've talking about. You've got 74 about. feet. 74 feet of area between a mine that it'll have to drift, tidal drift and current and everything else. So between 74 feet, you mean you can't take a shallow draft boat, a junk? Now, if you want to do this, you go ahead and do it. But it will be kind of uncomfortable when you're desperate, for you. When you're you desperate and want would the material and when you're fighting a war, you do a lot of desperate things like send non-strategic materials to a foreign country. This so, is so, what so, I'm saying. So, so, so what, the... what do you consider a non-strategic oh, material? He can answer that <laughs> right after the sponsor has his day in court here. Now, can we continue? Yes, sir, go ahead. Right, now, we've got to a point where the mines are completely ridiculous to try to put in a harbor, so we can't blockade no, the harbor. No, uh, no, you, you may have gotten to that point, but believe me, if there are some mines in the harbor, then I'm not going to sail through them. And if you can bring a junk from England over those mines, then you go ahead and do it, but it probably will be metal ships and how, deep draft ships, right? How do they unload Do you agree with supplies? this? Why not have the junk sail out and meet the ships at sea and then come in a short distance? If you're fighting a war against these people, then you can sink them when they've sailed out. You said yourself a moment ago that you're concerned about the fact that your youngster might be drafted and indeed could unfortunately be killed in this war. Isn't that so? Oh, this is very true. All right. Then why aren't you just as concerned with the fact that Britain is supplying his potential enemy too, as well no, as ours? No, 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 no. Once again, uh, now, it seems very hard to get this over to Americans, but Americans Oh, we're so this. dumb and you English are so bright, huh? No, m m many Americans, this is why they're so perturbed about this war. It seems to be very hard to get over to them, though, that we have no policy once again in South Vietnam. Uh, the Marines are in enclaves, bouncing in and out of enclaves, and the army is bouncing about all over South Vietnam, but we don't know what to do other than perhaps to maintain a kind of status well, quo. How can we do anything with a British supply? Oh, don't talk nonsense. Three ships! Three ships All from right. Britain to North Vietnam. How many ships? Three. How many ships? Three. According to the report, 60% of all shipping going into Haiphong flies the British flag. 60% of, uh, of the ships going to Haiphong may fly a British flag, but they're chartered, many of them, to the Chinese they're to only, the communists. They're only full, they're right? Down the coast. Uh, so you admit you fooling. supply the communists. Do you ships. believe that under you the take British over naval charter, you supply ships to quite a few nations? Oh, without pro doubt. and con. Without doubt. There are the about United 20 States ships, not 60. All right, all the British Admiralty has to do is cancel the charter, right? No, these are private charters. If you have a charter, are you so socialistic? You fly a Panamanian flag. Please, please, sir, if you have a ship that belongs to you, do you really believe, uh, are you so socialistic you think the state should come in and take away your right to do what you wish with your own? No, so, but when the so state naive, guarantees sir. them now, safe passage on the sea, when the state gave guarantees them like the British does, like the British Admiralty, guarantees them safe passage on the sea and protection from all other sources. Yes, by God, I think you can pull Do you think Amen. that your ship should be granted safe 
transit on uh, on the sea by your government? Definitely. Okay, that's all that's happening. All right. But these no. ships are under charter. Many of them, and they sail out of Hong Kong and they run up and down with nothing very much to keep the war going. Believe me. This but apparently you there's hardly anything that going to be in. Afraid. There's hardly anything that. going into Hai Phong. You don't Once know again, that. if you're so worried, mine the harbour and the trade will stop. How will it but stop? Are How worried. are you going to stop you're trade by mining a harbour? You're chasing after a issue, sir, because you know as well as I do. The war in South Vietnam is not being prosecuted the way it should be because That's America has no policy. See, this is where the people this are man, being how can you hey, this, man is, this man is sending up a smoke screen to get yeah, you away from else. the fact do you know that his people are supplying our enemies. He's putting up a big smoke screen that we don't know how to run the war. But what are the British doing to help us? Isn't the war against well, communism 50, their war too? Well, troops in Malaya. Where, where that war was won, and you might, and all of you, might take careful note of how that war was won in Malaya because the same thing should now be being done in the Mekong Delta. Now, and what the, uh, what the American troops should be doing should be pacifying an area, moving through the Mekong Delta, uh, ever moving the front forward and having... A General Montgomery with us tonight. Oh, come on now. This has been done. Uh, have it's you ever worked. been to Vietnam? No, I haven't. You know, there are many places I haven't been to, but I do. I can read. Can you read? Most certainly. Right, then. Have you read about the British operation in Malaya? I most certainly have. Then you know what happened. They cleared the paratrooped Indonesians there out of there, didn't they? a different country. Oh, yes, just jungle there, whereas in Vietnam, what is it? You have plains, rice paddies, okay. etc. Okay, which is it easier to fight in from our point of view, in the plains or in the jungles? Much easier in the jungle in this type of war. You know, you, you have... 14 divisions going into this jungle and they can't even find the Viet Cong. Have you ever tried to put 14 divisions it? through a rice and yet, paddy? And yet, sir, I use the word loosely, <coughs> you, in uh, the Mekong I Delta... I think he's insulted you, although no, you've no. given him ample opportunity. In the Mekong Delta, this is really the, uh, I was going to say the bread basket, but it's the rice basket uh, of Indochina. Is this not so? Mm. Cochin, China is where the peasants used to come from the north in, in, in the area of the Red River Delta. They used to come down into Cochin, China to get work. But in other words, what is now North Vietnam, the peasants would come there down into what is now South Vietnam because this is an enormously fertile area. And Very we cool. do not hold it, do we? And furthermore, according to General Westmoreland, and this is the thing that we should take careful note of, never mind about North Vietnam. Never mind about it. Never mind it. 75% of the VC in the Mekong Delta, according to General Westmoreland, are South Vietnamese. It's those people are fighting for their own country against us in the Mekong Delta. We'd better take Sounds note like of that and do something you. about it. Like how many, how many well, Germans... Well, General Westmoreland had better be uh, pulled back from Vietnam I because haven't, he I haven't it. read that statement. I'd like to see that statement. I'd like to see the proof. <laughs> you just have to read what You're he says. You're a great man with broad, you just sweeping have to statements read without, what any, he says. without any proof. I don't even know whether you can read. Uh. <laughs> Well, sir, there's one thing, fact, I'm getting one more thing and more I can convinced do. That he I, I, I can actually. speak normal grammar, which you don't seem to be able to do. Oh, please. And maybe oh, that's uh, <laughs> one-upsmanship on you. Oh, come on now. Are you going to get back to the point? And the point you is how to win the war. You, the you have gone away from the point up. nine million times. What do you mean? You mean I, I spent the last quarter of an hour in the Mekong Delta and what have you said? away from the point? What have you said? You want to concentrate on free ships and less than half a million dollars worth of... Total trade, in and out trade, total together is less than half a million dollars, and yet this is going to win or lose the war in Vietnam. What is going to win or lose the war in Vietnam is what the Americans do in Vietnam. Well, how can and the Americans do anything do when the what bloody British and are and not sir, minute, backing minute, their wait, policy? Wait, He's really, right. Really. It's going to depend on what we do in Vietnam and also what we, keep the, what we keep the British from doing. Right. This is, uh, the British are not doing anything. He just oh, pointed yes, out. You, are. you, you except, don't want us to think about that, but you're hindering. throwing up the smoke screen. You're a hindrance. You people you are know, a hindrance. The you. mighty power of the U.S. <laughs> is somehow thwarted by three ships trundling along over the waves. No, it's not the three Haifong, ships there. It's a $14,000 million dollars you we've got stop. to worry about going into you have admitted, uh, Ian Smith's Rhodesia. You We're have blocking an answer to the British. Let me ask, to Rhodesia. Let me We're turning ask you around question, in Malaysia Mr. protecting Just your tell country me one there. Thing. Let, it, let him answer this question. All right, go ahead. You say the magnetic mines would work against steel bottom uh, boats, okay? No. Okay, what are the uh, hulls of the ships that sail from England? All three of them. Are steel. they steel? Would the magnetic mine stop this trade?
from Britain, the three ships, from sailing into Haiphong Harbor. Sure, if you blockade them in British, they don't have to go into the harbor at Haiphong. They can lay if off... If you owned a ship and you knew you were intended to go to Haiphong and you knew the harbor was mine so you couldn't get into it, would you start? Yeah, you might start. You know, he's Definitely, talking. if the money's there, you know, Pollard, you the have to go all there, the way. Pollard there. here the is whole trying whole to talk. Thing. He's trying to talk about just a few <laughs> ships. The British are absolutely beside themselves about two oil tankers going into Rhodesia to the point where they went and got the UN to get a great big stick to attack these people who want their independence. Yeah, you know, what, what the US should be doing is hiring British diplomats who got the UN and the US to back them in this mad Look adventure. Look what happened during the Second World War with British diplomats. Oh, really? Now, here, well, where does the Second you World know, you War talk come like a socialized well, you're the one that's referred to it 14 million times. You've referred to the I've war in Malaysia. I've told you 100 million times not to exaggerate. All right, you've referred to the war in Malaysia, how the United States caused Britain to lose that. This has nothing to do with Haiphong. You've referred to the condition in Indonesia, or Rhodesia, how we've had to come to your aid. No, this has nothing to do with Haiphong. you have had to come to our aid. I think you're stupid to do so. Well, you, this, no matter what, whether we're stupid or not, it may have been a rash decision. Yeah, you're going to put you that one side. You, have you believe loyalty, then, is stupid. This is loyalty? Loyalty yes. to whom? Loyalty to your allies, to your friends, the kind of loyalty we expect but don't get from your people. You mean you should have sent uh, American troops into Malaya to help us with the communists? Possibly. But you didn't. All right. Okay, so now you've got more you loyal. See, but you see, you know, I don't you, try to you, lie you, about you, these you, mistakes not... we've made, but you s sit there and you, you, you argue about something that's indefensible. You're helping the enemies of this country. And you keep saying, how many men have we you got know, over there? You know, we've spent an awful long time over these three ships. Meantime, in 60 South Vietnam... percent of the ships, not <laughs> three. In South Vietnam, the war is being lost, and the Americans are crying in their lost? beer over three ships that go to, uh, to, to North ships, Vietnam. Speaking of ships, sir, we're giving now, you a ticket on a banana boat. Our time this. is up for you. You can't say any more. <laughs> we'll be back with another guest in just a moment. This man is leaving on a banana boat right now. <laughs> the, 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 the whole... Our guest is Mr. Marvin Davidov. Since 1963, the field secretary for the CNVA, the Committee for Nonviolent Action. The actions of the committee date back to 1957 when a group of demonstrators protested the nuclear test at the Nevada Proving Grounds by marching outside the testing grounds. Since then, they have been involved in the by now well known San Francisco to Moscow March for Peace that occurred in 1961 and various demonstrations outside the United Nations. Mr. Davidov, does the CNVA have any part in the Saigon demonstrations that we've been reading about? Yes, sir. CNVA, if I may explain yes. uh, the project, this project was conceived because the Committee for Nonviolent Action believes that uh, uh, the American involvement in Vietnam is immoral and impolitical, and that the only way for the United States to win in Vietnam is to commit genocide against the people of Vietnam, which we think is also immoral and impolitical. So CNVA, feeling that uh, it has protested uh, enough in the United States, attempted to send six pacifists to Vietnam to, in a sense, put their bodies where their mouths were, to protest against the American military involvement, to uh, see the situation firsthand on the spot, uh, to make contacts with Buddhist leaders and other Vietnamese resistance leaders, with pacifists, Pacif with pacifists, if there are any uh, uh, left in Vietnam, because many have been put in jail or executed, and uh, to also, because they were engaged in an act of conscience, hopefully stimulate the American people to demand an end to this illegal, immoral, unconstitutional war which we're engaged in. And incidentally, to give aid and comfort to our enemy, whom we're fighting know. there now. I don't uh, see how dissent, Mr. Pine, uh, even in wartime, can give aid and comfort to an enemy. Well, this by making a demonstration, dissent, by sir. making an American demonstration on the streets of Saigon, I would think that uh, this was a very dramatic way of uh, uh, delivering the enemy in a nicely wrapped package, a beautiful piece of propaganda. They had conversations with leaders and people of the Tokyo, of the Japanese peace movement, flew on to Saigon, where they spent four days making contacts with Buddhist leaders, talking with uh, various people in Vietnam, and uh, discovering that people there uh, have been engaged in a struggle in a rather brutal war for some 45 years, and whether they're communist or anti-communist, they want an end to the war. Now, this is the in information that I got. In whose favor? In all people's favor. Don't you believe that war is in no one's favor, really? D yes, I do, but don't you believe that if we were to pull out of Vietnam, 
very briefly in the next uh, 20 or 30 days if we were to get out that there would be wholesale murder of South Vietnamese people, people by, who had come down, I think, about a million of them from the north. Don't you think they would be destroyed? No, I don't think they would be destroyed. I think, uh, if I may give my program or alternative solution to this conflict, I would do so. What's that? No, I think that uh, President Johnson ought to admit to the world that we've made a terrible moral and political blunder and immediately begin to withdraw American troops from Vietnam. I think we ought to urge the resumption of the Geneva Accords and the reconvening of the International Control Commission. Well, let's talk about the first thing. Why doesn't President uh, Johnson admit that we, we made a blunder there? I think that's part of your program. Yes. Yes, Why don't you and others like you admit that maybe the communists made a blunder in trying to take too much on their plate, to trying to, in trying to molest their neighbors to the South, and not recognizing the fact that these people have a right to live in the South and be a government unto themselves? And when it comes to free elections, mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, who's got a better track record on free elections, the communists or us? I take, for example, the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I think, sir, that neither side has a track on free elections because I don't think uh, in a democracy offering people a choice between Lyndon Johnson and Barry Goldwater is much of a choice. Now, I think if you voted for Lyndon Johnson, who stood for peace in 1964 and an end to the Vietnamese conflict, I think you'll find that you got Barry Goldwater's foreign policy. I think you're drifting <laughs> here. I'm, I'm asking you, uh, yes. do, do you know of any country where there are really free elections under commies? I don't think that uh, there are free elections really anywhere in the world under government. You don't believe then in our system of government? Oh, I believe in certain aspects of uh, democracy, kind of decentralized form. This is where I would agree with the conservatives. But uh, what well, do you think we have a good constitution or a bad one? I think a constitution is a piece of paper. And, That's uh, all it represents to you? Oh, it's a piece of paper with words and the meaningless precepts, uh, words. freedom of speech freedom of assembly, mm -hmm. freedom of dissent. All of which you couldn't have under a communist government. Well, I How can you knock it? How can you look around the world and observe the Berlin Wall, observe uh, Siberia, observe the things that have gone on under the name of world communism, uh, the, the great leap forward, the, uh, the regulation mm -hmm. of the sex lives of the red Chinese people, which was a complete failure. How can you look at all those things and look at what we have here and say we haven't got anything either? How can you do it? Well, let me just say that I'm opposed to governments generally, and I'm opposed to any group or nation, collection of people which uses force or violence, physical force or well, violence you want to, be to opposed achieve to the its end. You want to be opposed, opposed to the I'm opposed to most governments, to the Chinese communist government when it attempts to resolve its conflicts by means of brutality and violence. I'm ashamed, may I say yeah, this, go because ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm ashamed at this point to be an American because we're attempting to bring freedom and democracy to the people of Vietnam by napalm bombing of women and children, uh -huh. by torture, by concentration don't, don't, camps, don't, don't forget and to by get murder. In, don't forget to get in the beheading by the Viet Cong, the disemboweling no, am, of 10-year-old children. You are don't quite forget, correct. Don't forget that. What would take the place of the, the system of government that we now have in your, your mind? What are, what are your recommendations locally? Well, I think that when I say, people, you know, in the nation. Yes. I think that people collectively should get together you and adopt a kind of decentralized form of politics and economics, create their own tactics. Now, I couldn't give you a formula. What I'm In other words, really you're not, a man without a plan. No, not, not without you're a plan. You're a rebel without a cause. <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Are you part of this group that lies in front of troop trains? Oh, I, I wasn't at Berkeley at the time, but I would have done that, certainly. You would have done that. Yes, I, I You know what I think? I think we should not deny you your civil rights. I think we mm. should allow you to lie in front of them and roll over you. Now, you said you May I give the well, rationale? I'm not, I'm not finished here yes. yet. You say uh, you're ashamed to be an American. Yes, I'm an I American am ashamed point. that you're an American. That's well, one thing I want to say. I'm ashamed that you're an American. Now, you said, I, may, may I, I, want to, I want to ask you one other thing. May, may I have ask you been, that, Have you been connected with a Vietnam Day committee? Yes, I worked as a paid staff member for uh -huh. three months. May I just say one other thing? Go ahead. You asked if I would lie in front of troop trains, and I, would, and I told you I would, having the opportunity, and I've committed civil disobedience love to be that on engineer. a number of occasions. Now, let me give you the rationale for civil disobedience. You remember during the Nuremberg war crimes trials where the Allied judges tried Nazis for committing genocide against the Jews, 
Every Nazi who was tried at Nuremberg said to the Allied judges, I was only following the legitimate orders and commands of a legal, legitimate government. Whose orders the do you Allied follow? The Allied judges had to say to the Nazis, you had a moral obligation to disobey laws which would order you to commit genocide against human beings. I feel I have a moral obligation to disobey laws which are forcing Americans to commit genocide against men, women, and children in Vietnam. Unfortunately, his moral code doesn't seem to fit in with mine. Let's go to the uh, doc now and let's... Uh, would you, would that, you state your name, please? Uh, my name is Leo Kwame, and uh, yes. from Orange County. And I have one question I'd like, I'd like to ask you. Guess, uh, has he ever lived under communist rule? No, I never have, sir. Well, I have. I've spent four years of it. How was that? It wasn't very funny. Uh, how did that come about? I was uh, captured by the Chinese. During Korea? During Korea. And uh, the way you speak, that they don't uh, use violence? No, I said that they, they, the Chinese use violence to achieve their revolution, as the Americans did, to achieve the American Revolution. Well, and I am opposed to any group which uses violence to achieve its ends. Now, the Vietnam, the Viet Cong, uses selective violence to achieve its ends, and I can relate to them uh, on the basis of a quote by Gandhi. I'm a follower of Gandhi. Gandhi said when asked what he would do if the Germans invaded India, he said, as for me, I would remain nonviolence. This is my way of life, my philosophy of life. But for people who cannot accept nonviolence, it is better to resist evil with violence than not to resist at all. I think the Viet Cong is resisting evil with violence, and they have tried nonviolence. It did not succeed for them. You, why aren't you willing to resist, to resist the communist evil with violence? No, I, I would resist any evil, communist or helping. democratic. You call it evil to try to help people out? Pardon me? Are you call it evil to try to help people out? No, what people are we helping out, What do you sir? think we're doing over in Vietnam? The same thing we did I in think, Korea to help those people out. I think according to the State Department, what we're doing is trying to contain the spread of Chinese communism and to practice counterinsurgency guerrilla methods and to keep that area out of the hands of the Chinese communists because it is a strategic area, wealthy in uh, minerals and well, rubber and rice and so on. You know the real reason why we're there? is to stop them from using violence on those people. Did you ever see somebody try to turn, uh, being turned over, convinced that he should be a communist? No, sir, I don't believe that anybody can be turned over. I don't think that totalitarianism is monolithic. I think that it rests on the uh, massive cooperation of millions of people, and when this cooperation is creatively withdrawn, then the totalitarian will fall. So therefore, I urge uh, men and women, or men, rather, uh, in, the, in America and anywhere else under any communist uh, dictatorship to refuse to pay their taxes for war and to refuse to serve in the armed forces. Right, we'll and take to that up in a moment. We've got to, we've got to leave for the sponsor. We'll be right back. Yes, sir. Your statement said you refuse to pay taxes or just abide by anything that uh, you didn't want to believe in. That would be, that would no, solve your no, problem. No, I didn't say that, sir. I said I would refuse to pay taxes and although I served in the armed forces because I used to be a liberal and believed that you one ought to wage war to bring peace, which is semantically, I think, improper or illogical, but I, I, I would obey those laws which uh, are, are helpful and rational and disobey those which go against my conscience, openly, honestly, and uh, taking the consequences for my acts. You ran a party in Minnesota to raise money for a trip for you to China, Red China, is that correct? Yes, we never got there. You we raised, never started. You raised $90. $90. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why did you want to go to Red China? I wanted to go to Red China because I think uh, that the United States ought to recognize Red China, admit her into the United Nations, and uh, our people ought to get together as human beings as we're talking. In other words, you were going over and, in violation uh, deal of the, on the federal basis law. of reason and compassion, love and understanding. You knew, of course, as a federal law. Yes. which prohibits private citizens from attempting to influence heads of foreign state. Let me ask you this. If I would give you the, the fair to Red, if I would give you the one-way fair to Red China, would you sign an agreement not to come back here? <laughs> because uh, no, I'll, I, ma I I'll make you that offer. Take, take him up on it. Take him up on it. <laughs> I'll pay your fare to Red China if you'll sign an agreement not to come back and surrender your passport <laughs> and renounce your U.S. citizenship. Right now, I'll make you out a check 
for your full fare, whatever it is. I wish you'd make me out a check to carry out my work, but I couldn't guarantee you that I wouldn't come back if my conscience moved me. That's my total motivation back. to get you over there for good. But I'll tell you, I wouldn't. Nothing, pay taxes no one on could deserve a trip to Red China more than you. <laughs> Thank and you to very remain much. in that country. I'd love to see China. Hey, you know, Joe, I think that China is feeding its people for the, for the first time. And, when, and despite the fact that the United States is pouring billions into India, India cannot feed its people. Now, I'd like to see if this is a reality or not. I'd also like to talk to Mao Zedong because I've made a long oh, walk. Well, I'll just bet you 2,700 miles. What would you say? Hello, comrade? No, I'd say, hello, uh, Chairman Mao. I understand you're a poet. Mr. Lyndon David, I've been. Have, you, isn't have you ever been a red? A red? Communist. What do you, mean? you know what I mean. No, I don't. Are you I wish communist? You'd, I wish you'd explain what a communist is. You don't know what one is. What a red is. Uh -huh. No, there's so many definitions. Uh -huh. You see, Cuban communist. Uh -huh. Are uh, you are you any kind of know, a communist? A monk is a communist. Are you any kind of a communist? You know, I wouldn't really answer uh, that question if my own mother answered asked it. I'm a pacifist. But you couldn't answer. You couldn't say no. Well, I'm I am not a pacifist. A, you wouldn't and, say uh, no. I'm not any kind of a communist. No, I wouldn't say that. All right. No, I think you ought to uh, take an existential view of me and try to understand the under basis. Unfortunately, sir, I'm not an existentialist. Well, uh, all right, that's uh, legitimate. But uh, you ought to understand me on the basis of my actions. Oh, I understand you. What I say. I understand you perfectly. You represent that? everything that I'm fighting against. Everything. I understand you right down to the well. Last I hope you're not head. using physical force <laughs> to fight. You see. Well, if that's possible, I mean, if, that, if that's let, needed, let me ask we'll do you that, that too. You let know. me ask you this: when you because you may wind up on the side on the opposite side of the lines, and I may be delighted to use well, physical I, force. Well, I wouldn't use it against you in return. Well, then you I wouldn't be around. I try to understand long. you, to have compassion for you. Who wants your compassion? Yes, my Save it for the Hammond Reds. They're going to need it before we're through. Everyone needs it. So well, do we. Let's have this man here come up now. Who wants to get in the dock? State your name. Uh, Paul Denard. Uh, I heard you say that. Uh, you would not fight Joe Pine if he used violence against I would, you. I would resist him, but oh. without violence. Without violence. How would you resist him without violence? Well, let me tell a story, if I might. I don't know how long we have. You mean all this time you haven't been telling a story? <laughs> That's right, I haven't. I was a member of an integrated peace walk, which went from uh, Quebec, Canada, to Miami, Florida. It was an attempt to... Uh, off create nonviolent solutions and alternatives to a crisis which nearly destroyed the human race. Don't that forget the, the trip to Cuba. Blockade. Throw that in, too. That's right. Unfortunately, the U.S. government stole our boat and confiscated it. Um, if I might mention this. We you were that. taking a boat to Cuba, weren't you? Yes, we oh, were. Right. Yes, and uh, the Coast Guard stole the boat two and a half miles out of Miami, and the U.S. government entered an in-rem proceeding uh, against the boat, not against the NVA or any of us. And the title of it was rather interesting, I thought, because uh, it was entitled The United States Government Versus the Spirit of Freedom, which was the name of the boat. Now, uh, what this was an What would Castro know about freedom? <laughs> what would Castro know? He well, wouldn't have understood have the name of the boat him. when you got over there. Oh, I think he understands English as well as uh, Spanish. No, I didn't mean you're Americans missing the point. He doesn't understand freedom. <laughs> Here's a man that promised free elections the day he took over in Havana. The Cuban mm -hmm. people have yet to see them. Well, that's quite true. Yeah. I think they ought to hold, uh, Castro ought to hold. You have lots election. of interesting friends, yes, sir. <laughs> I'd like to ask another thing. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't really answer your question, sir, if I just might very briefly. This was an integrated peace walk. It took five months for us to walk from Quebec, Canada, to the northern border of Georgia, and it was to take five months to walk through the state of Georgia. At one, we were 21 Americans, Negro men, ah. white men, white women, and... Uh, we were distributing leaflets and carrying signs which said, uh, we're walking to Cuba for peace, demand free trade with Cuba, demand freedom to visit Cuba, end exploitation in Latin America, end racial discrimination, freedom now, and defend and extend I, I freedom like by nonviolent resistance. I'd like to say one thing. It yeah, seems but I didn't really answer your question. Well, you then, see. for heaven's sake, get to the answer so this man All can right. have a chance. We to were speak. attacked at one point by a man who disliked the fact that there were Negro men and white women walking together in a nonviolent project. He attempted to rip up our signs and began to smash one of us around, who merely walked up to him and asked him, you see, what are you doing here? And bent to pick up the signs. Now, at one point, I walked up to him. I found it was kind of involuntary, you know, because this may not be a natural response. It may be. We're not quite sure. 
And uh, I was rather scared, and he was breathing hard from the exertion of knocking my friend around, who was lying <laughs> bleeding on the ground. And I said, we're not going to hit you. You have nothing to fear from us. Well, uh, he was rather, looked rather confused, and, his, and uh, it seemed like uh, minutes passed. There were only seconds. His hand went back, and he unloaded one on me. Well, I ducked and kind of caught on the back, and then everybody in our group, without arms, you know, walked up and began to talk to him. They said, what's wrong? What's the matter? What's, what's the problem? He said, the police told me I could get you off my property. Now, we said we didn't know we were on your property. We were taking a lunch break on the side of the road. Shortly afterwards, he disappeared, and I said to the group, I think we ought to keep moving because we're a stationary target here, and we're in really hostile country, a foreign country. The South is considered to be a foreign country by a lot of people. And we went on walking. Only white women would leaflet for us at this point because we were using the myth of the white woman in our favor. Shortly, uh, we came by a large restaurant with a gravel lot. There was a police car sitting there, the man who had attacked us and 15 other men. Two of our women walked into that crowd to offer leaflets to them. The leaflets were ripped up and obscenities were alluded to uh, uh, that, that the white women were having sexual relations with Negro men on our walk. The women rejoined us. We went on walking. A little later, uh, we noticed two cars rushed by. The two cars had 10 men in them. In them. They stopped 100 yards uh, in front of us. And uh, this one man, who was very brave because we were 10 men, he had now nine friends with him, but they sat in their car. He came walking down the highway. It was kind of like high noon. You know, one, I said to myself, this can't be real. Is it real? And uh, he began to rip up our signs again. Once again, we attempted to approach him to, you know, whatever creative way we could, ask him what was bothering him and attempt to, uh, well, negotiate with him to find out what it was, how we could solve this problem without beating on him as he expected us to, perhaps. Uh, as we approached him, to talk with him, his nine friends crossed the highway. You see, when they saw we weren't hitting him, they got back in their cars, and we were able to talk to this man. He stood rather confused, looking at us, and then drove away. All right, now, that's he dripped so man. much for that story. I want to hear from this man now. All Go right. ahead. Uh, while I was sitting back in the audience, I yeah. noticed you made some comment to the effect that uh, you thought the uh, Chinese were uh, leading their people once. In a, uh, Feeding, a, a, sir. Oh, feeding. Yes. Okay, I misunderstood you on that. Then, uh, number two, I, I'd like to uh, point out that I have a friend who lives up in the Bay Area who is a member of this Vietnam Day Committee. Now, I won't go into names, but I would like to inform you that this uh, person believes in the violent overthrow of our government. Mm -hmm. He is Marxist. No, he doesn't say this pub uh, publicly. He has uh, admitted this to me. And he, uh, he believes in this, and uh, he truly believes in it, and he's willing to fight. And the fact of the matter is, he's a fool for believing it, but fools are dangerous. So this is what we have to be afraid of. All right, of. sir, we thank you, and uh, that concludes this interview. We'll be back with another guest in just a moment. Our guest is an undergraduate of Southwestern University Law School who has undertaken one of the most ambitious legal maneuvers we've ever read of. Robert Brock has filed with the upper courts a writ calling for the United States to appear before the UN General Assembly and show cause why they should not be found guilty of genocide against the Negro in America. Mr. Brock is the chairman of the Committee for Self-Determination, Reparations, and Repatriation for United States Slaves Descendants Incorporated. Mr. Brock, to begin with, where do we repatriate you to? Uh, I didn't call for any repatriation. Did I mispronounce in any way the name of your organization? No, you, you, well, you didn't pronounce the full name. You mean this, you've got a longer name than that one? I'll yes. read it once more. No, I, let me... Let me All right, you, right, you see, give us, and I'll The check name it. of the organization is Self-Determination, Reparations, Re Repatriation, and United States of America Citizenship Committee for United States of America Slave Descendants Incorporated. All right. That's Substantially, the name. I was correct. The word well, repatriation no, is in there, no, isn't it? No, if you left out the word citizenship, you made it a one-sided deal. Well, we'll get to that, too, in a minute. Yes, right. all right. Now, 
my first question is still a valid one, sir. To where would you like to be repatriated? Well, before I can be repatriated, I first must have self-determination. I have a choice in this government. So if I like to develop my premises, I, I'd like to do that, then maybe... How old a man are you? 42. 42? Yes. Does anybody stop you from voting? No, that's uh, not... Uh, we, you can vote. We can vote. Uh, right. it's not, uh, what what I'm kind of self-determination don't, don't you have currently? It's, it, it's only one time, kind of self-determination, so I'll explain it. What's that? First of all, there exists a problem in the United States which the United States government has not been able to solve in over 400 years. And it mostly pertains now at this time to an international question and about the only body that can solve it and in which this question comes is the United Nations. And the United States, after signing the United Nations Charter, obligated itself to carry out its purposes. And one of these purposes was to submit to the United Nations General Assembly in 1946 the names of all the people in their, under their jurisdiction that did not have self-determination. And according to the United States submitted some more, Alaska, Hawaii, Virgin Islands, and several other, uh, several other territories. But they failed to submit the uh, slave descendants, which we were referred to as Negroes, because that's popularly referred to as Negroes. Are you not a Negro, by the way? Well, that's, that's, that, that's not an issue here. You see, I, well, I can't use I suppose use the it term. is. What do no. I call you? can't call you a slave. Uh, no, just a moment. You see, the reason why I'm not using the term Negro is because in this complaint, the uh, identification of this class of people is in, in contest. In other words, we are bringing the charge against the United States for a restoration of the identity. And if I should use the term Negro or Afro-American or African-American or African, then I have no contention for a restoration of an identity or a nationality. Now, sir, let me ask you a couple of questions. So, sir. Mr. Brock, yes. you're a law student, yes. and you know something about bringing suit. Yes. Now, if I said something on this program and you were home watching it, yes. and it slandered you in some way, yes. would you sue just me, or would you sue me and the station and everybody concerned, perhaps even the sponsors? I would sue everybody concerned. Okay. Then why don't you sue everybody concerned when it comes to slavery? Why don't you make this a suit that not only involves the United States, but also your African predecessors who sold you into slavery in the first place? I'm not saying the Africans sold me into slavery. The no, I'm saying it. Yeah, I know. Well, naturally, you would say it. And it's true. <laughs> you see, it's because true. the suit is against you. Wait see? a minute. You're not you getting see? all parties concerned involved. I am isn't getting it? all the parties right, concerned. Sir, isn't it true that in order for slave traders to originally get Negroes and put them in slave ships and take them here into other countries, they had to have the cooperation of the African tribesmen who captured their fellow the Africans? The question don't concern Africans. And sure Africa, it does. It doesn't concern you. Well, no, sir, no. it concerns everybody who put no, you in slavery. No, no, Everybody who had a hand question, in making you no, a slave. The question now concerns the people that are caught with the goods. <laughs> That's oh, what it concerns. Oh, in you other see, words, uh, anybody who was involved before that. No, no, it concerns Well, I guess I'm lucky because I don't own any slaves. You can't no, catch no, me no, with no, any goods. No, just a moment. Now, we're not, uh, what we're bringing out is that the United States government, by capturing and enslaving, are allowing its sovereign white citizens to capture and enslave the African people and, their, and, and also by the United States government passing laws to continue this captivity. Let me ask you about that. Yes. They, do do you have any record, uh, and I'm only asking you this mm -hmm. because I don't know the answer, do you have any record to show where the United States government yes. ever sent out any ships to take slaves? You did mention the government. I did mention the government. Uh, was, there ever a time, was there ever a time when the U.S. government, no, the federal government, moment. did it? All right, I know that the United States government, through its Navy, protected the slave ships. I know the United States government, through one of its generals, which later became President of the United States, used the United States Army to go down into West Florida to round up some Africans that had stayed down there 10 or 12 years, brought them back to Georgia, and put them in slavery. I know the United States government okay. to pass two fugitive slave laws. I know the United States government to pass the 14th Amendment. Then I think you've got some... No, I think I'm going to agree with you here. I think yeah, that you've got a good case going yes. for you. However, yes, we mustn't forget the original slave masters, your own people. No, no, you? that's what's no... Oh, original. you don't, no, you don't no, want to no. talk about that. You see, for 400 years, for 400 years of labor, rapes, robbery, uh -huh. genocide, that's all committed in the continental United States of America. Yes, sir. The well, how many centuries do you want to go back beyond that? No, no, Why no, do you want to uh -uh. stop there? No, no, Is it because no. you don't think you can get blood out of a no, turnip? No, no, that's not the blood of it, no. Uh, uh. It's because you don't think you get the first base? No, we'll be back, sir, after these commercial words. Stand by.
Yes, sir. State your name. Uh, my name is Clifford McLean. Uh, Mr. Pine, first I would like to say to you, in your argument, uh, you say that the Negro or the African uh, in Africa had a part in the slavery deal. Yes. I say to you that uh, this was related to us, that they did have the part. Now, I'm sure that there were certain chiefs that participated, but as a whole, it was the white man that came there for the slaves and brought the slaves back, as this man has stated. All right, sir, that, what, but yes. what kind of reasoning is that? Uh, if you didn't provide the market to begin mm -hmm. with, then these boats couldn't have come there because but those men would have been swallowed up and devoured by the tribes. They would have been slaughtered wholesale. There was no chief. No. Don't even admit to, don't even admit to the premise. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Why just not? saying, I, I must I'm be... admitting you might have a, have a case if you get all parties concerned no. and bothered. I'm admitting that no, maybe you've got it. No, no, see, on. now you're evading the issue. Sure, that's that's, that's what you're it. doing right now. You're going well, to pay. But Why am I, I evading I, the but issue, But I, I came up here to say, I don't Tell know me. why you are. I guess it's because... He's uh, guilty. Yeah, yeah, guilty. Well, well, <laughs> you may have, you may, it may be that you feel guilty. Did but you I, hear me say to him a while ago, maybe you have a case that... Yes, all right, but I'm not going any further. I just wanted to make a statement as to what you said. That's the point. You only want to go back to where you think it's collectible. Like, well, you don't no. sue a guy that hasn't got any dough. Now, this well, smacks of opportunity. You say you don't sue a guy that has. That you ever doesn't hear the phrase judgment proof? When they say no. somebody's judgment proof, you, you know what it means. Yes, it exactly. means you might as well not sue him yes. because nothing can I happen. I understand, but what I'm saying to you is that you were evading the issue when you brought up the African chief. Yeah. Now, I, and you I, know this me, yourself. Please tell me how I'm evading the issue. Please tell because me. Because you won't you want accept the blunt of the argument. Because this is, it is, it is, it is aimed. Uh, you heard me accept part of his argument. Well, I part. Said he That's may, what I said. He may have a case, but he yes. admitted to me that if he was going to sue me, he wouldn't mm -hmm. stop with me. Yes. He'd sue the station, the sponsor, whatever he could do. <coughs> yes. Because everybody's involved here. Yes. Now, on the other hand, why don't you fellows want to sue everybody but involved? Wait a minute. I don't want to sue anybody. I feel that I am just as free as you are. Now, but let me make my point. Okay. I contend that people like Mr. Brock, and people like you who support him wait don't want it brought don't, out. Don't, wait a minute, just one second. You yeah. say, I support him. I didn't, I didn't come up here to support him. Well, I you're doing a pretty here. good job no. when you say I'm evading I the issue. You are. I'm telling the truth. I'm supporting <laughs> the truth. The I'm truth. free. And, and he wait just happens to be telling wait the just truth. just a right? second. He was telling the truth on his part, on his argument. Yes. Right, but, but he doesn't go I'm far enough. You, well, I don't know how far do you want him to go. You want him I to go back. I want to include continue. everybody that yes. ought to be sued. But wait a minute. That's, that's you watering it down now. This man has points to make. I just came up to make a point myself, but I couldn't uh, say something to him without saying something to you. I have to be fair about it. W may I ask you this question? Yes. Isn't it a fairly well-kept, not a secret, but it's really played down the part the African played in the enslavement of the American No, Negroes. I wouldn't say it was played down because every time somebody mentions it, as you have, you, you go back to the African chief. <laughs> See, this is, how, this is where you, no. And the people. And the people. Sure. And what people? The chief couldn't go and get slaves without, without help from the people. Oh, no. Stanley, Li Stanley Livingston, <laughs> the missionaries. Christian missionaries helped him out. Trevor, it's you all don't believe Africa. You don't believe oh, that. Oh, wait a minute. have the records. They didn't want to give the records to the British and you, the you Americans. You believe that the, that the missionaries who went over to, that to preach the love of God were, became slavery. Love of slavery. God. That's how they got the whole continent with the Bible, the cross. Jesus, water, Holy Mary, Holy Hell. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, well, see, see, I, I take it you're, a, you're an no, anti-religionist. No, not, this has nothing to do with that because the religion is, is included in the complaint, too. Oh, you're going to sue some religion? No, I'm not going to sue no religion. Just that old shotgun religion where you put somebody in the back of the Baptist church in the South and said, yeah. Negro preacher, preach this. All right, as long as well, we're mentioning that, let's mention about all those fine no, gentlemen let's get who, wound up, at, no, wait no, a minute, who wound up in the pot. Now, now, now let's, let's not yeah, uh, like carry this on this any old. further. Now, first of oh, all, I the know reason you don't I wanna, came you don't up... Talk about what uh, you don't want to talk about. No, well, we know well, this is your about. show, I understand, we but we had a point to make. Now, I didn't, come, I didn't come up here to uh, join this man. Uh, I came up to make a point. When you uh, made your point, I just... Fire one. Yes. Now, first of all, I came to say that I don't hold it against you. Slavery. No. Thank you. All right. But the thing is, I came to say that I am free. 
And this is my country as much as it is anybody else's. I'll buy that. Yes. And I intend to do all that I can to take my rightful place in this country. I intend to yes. do all I can to all give right. it to you. Well, fine. Give I appreciate you that. Not to it. help him, if you will. He's implying you don't. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. Now, now, this is another thing, too. You see, this uh, is a defensive mechanism no, going on but here. wait a minute. This man has his reason. Right, this man wants to share the mic with you. You don't have to leave. Just okay. uh, share it with him now. Uh, state your name. and why you're Yes, sir. You, you and your people right now are fighting for your equal rights. No, you want, we're no, not you, fighting for equal right. rights. Well, we're fighting for self-determination. The Negro people today are fighting to be as equal as I am, right? Well, I'm, All right. Uh, Why in heaven's name do you people, or you, yeah. want to be as equal as a bunch of slave drivers? As equal? Uh, All right. No. Just a moment. You say you're getting to be a funny Mr. boy. Mr. Pine, we're since I am up here, since I am up here, I must say this. Just a uh, moment. Just, yeah, Let me okay, ask this ahead, question. We're not fighting to be equal to slave drivers. We are fighting to have self-determination. It has no relationship to the equality that the American government or white people can offer. It's equality the way we see equality. We're not fighting to be equal with you. Because if I had my equality, I probably wouldn't even be around you. Can I ask you one question? Just one simple question. Don't you think the Indians ought to sue you? Now, that was not the Indians. Let's get on back on the question now. You know, Let's get on back did on you the ever question. stop and think how many Negroes the served, in the, served in the Army and fought against the Indians and took away their lives and sure. their land? Huh? Sure, sure. they fought against them. So then them. The, the Indians ought to sue you. Well, then, just right to shut the killed. Joe Pine, please. Uh, right. Let's get on back to no, the question. No, I mentioned that either. Please. We'll be back. Gentlemen, we'll be back. We'll be right back after these words are sponsored. Stand by. Lady has joined the gentleman there in the dock. Would you state your name? Frances Kirker. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you, could you sue uh, an Indian? Because you Indian? can't sue me because I was here first. Yeah, so you have a suit uh, going no. yourself. You have a suit you're going yourself. You see, you have a good suit going. Yeah. Yeah, you have a good one going. You have a better one than I have. Well, you see what I mean? What so I have nothing against you. I'm just against these <laughs> slaveholders. Now, okay. let me finish developing my point. What I'm saying is that uh, the American government, after allowing captivity and capturing the blacks from Africa, brought them to this country, and is presently still holding the blacks in a state of captivity. And it's done this way. The American government unilaterally passed and adopted the law that makes the United States slave the center of the part of this government. The 14th Amendment, after being adopted by white people only, incorporated the blacks into this government as a citizen. Well, you can call them a slave or a citizen. The Constitution was used to make them a slave, and the Constitution was used to make them a citizen. This is the point. point. The Negro, or the the slave, the Senate, never had anything to do with the Constitution or the 14th Amendment or any other law. He is not obligated to perform citizenship, All right, which includes hear. going where? The lady to wants to say something here now. Yes. Yes, ma'am. State your name. I'm Betty Lou Stewart. I yes, would like Mr. to know what kind of reparations you have in mind. What kind of reparations? Well, let's just put it, let's say uh, reparations I have in mind is whatever a person wake for, whatever he earned. We do know this, that in, in, in 1860, out of uh, every dollar's worth of material going out of this country, the slaves produced 75 cents on every dollar. And that had been going on for over 200 years. And now, let's add the other wealth in the last hundred years, and you can go to your own Bureau of Census, and you will find the difference in his salary, the, the black salary and the white salary. It's, it's all there in black and white. That's what we'll be waiting for. Should it be paid in, 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 the in the money of those days or in the money of today? Those, what do you mean those days? Why do you think you get these highways? Why do you think an acre of land sold downtown on Temple Street for a million dollars? Why do you, where do you get these trains? Where do you get you them bullets to shoot the Vietnams wages? with? Where How do you, you get that from? You get it from the slave labor. Look at you dressed in them fine clothes, slave labor. Look at the television. You're able to put up <laughs> factories everywhere. You're able to put up guns. Now you want the blacks to go over in Vietnam and die. But I'll tell you this. No, my Number one. No, no, no. just a minute. They my are not. My family were that, from the pioneer stock. That is the, they... the Negro. I'm going to use the term Negro. Well, the Negroes are not obligated. The Negroes are not obligated, legally obligated by the law of this government to be in the armed forces of this government. What law obligates them? You can't say the Same Constitution. Same law that obligates any citizen. No. What You're you, a citizen. What, what do you mean? What do you, you mean? What do you mean? Well, no, it is not beside the point. The Ninth Amendment says all persons born or naturalized in the U.S. Oh, well, and subject no, to the no. jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the U.S. Yeah, we are subject what? Subject because you made the law. 
We you're, never made the law. You're, uh, we're not obligated to go to Vietnam. You, well, don't you we've run out of time. Here. We've run you, out of time, and I want to thank you all for being here very much. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, all right. Good luck. Oh, we can turn up the sign. Let me get back again.